19th of October, 2001. Following the attacks on the United States a month prior, Green Berets crossed over the border into Afghanistan inside an MH-47 Chinook helicopter, unknowingly kick-starting a 20-year conflict. The men of ODA-595 were among the first boots on the ground, tip of the spear. Many of them were carrying the Colt M4A1 carbine, outfitted with our subject, in its first wide scale use in Afghanistan, and later in Iraq, the an 2 Laser Designator. Yes, nothing screams G-Watch than an M4 carbine outfitted with an ACOG and the legendary an 2 riding atop the Knight's wrist system. You can keep all those ugly Block 3s in their Peck 15s N-Gals, C-Gals and Steven Seagals. This is where I live right here. This is Peak M4. Hey guys, Bada Bing here. Courtesy of Bavtac, I have the Somo Gear Peck 2 in for review. I was virtually on the edge of my seat after I opened the DM which read, Want a Peck 2 for your MWS? So a massive thanks to Bavtac for lending me this full-on Moons Out Goons Out edition of Somo Gears Replica Peck 2. Or I should say Peck 2A, as this features the safety block which stops it from going into full power mode by accident. Across Somo Gears product range, they offer both visible and invisible options. In keeping with the genuine Insight Technology Peck 2, this does not feature visible modes. You have the choice of either low power laser only, low powered illuminator only, high power laser mode, high powered illuminator mode, and dual high powered laser and illuminator. In my younger days when I played airsoft and played film sims and mill sims a couple of times a year, I used to rock a Solomensis, and I had their Peck 2 IR model which was essentially a GNP unit with IR upgrades. It was okay, it was serviceable, but it wasn't the finest quality. The laser wasn't quite true IR spec, and its calibration was extremely wonky. The adjustment turret guards fell apart after a couple of years, so it was a wonderful surprise when the Somo Gear version arrived at my door. It felt solid enough to bludgeon someone to death with. That's what you want, that's what we all want. Something that you can actually bludgeon someone to... Something that can survive on a toy gun like this. Somo Gear's chonky TV remote comes inside this neat hard plastic case, with a whole package worth of goodies supplied. Firstly, they include the various warning stickers and product data labels. Next up is the very handy external mod light style button switch, with a crane plug. You also get the means to attach it to a rail system, both M-Lock and the industry standard 20mm rail. Then there's these two small O-rings. Now these are quite important to this video so we'll get to these later. The unit itself is a brick. The polymer used looks to be identical to the material that my real Insight Peck 14 was made up from, so rest assured, you've got a robust Peck. Its rail adapter is the solid foundation as well. It's not going anywhere. As this is my first experience of Somo Gears products, I am delighted by the quality of this device. The attention to detail is spot on. Examining it from all angles, there's nothing that looks poorly made or roughly finished. They've obviously taken great pride in their work and it shows. On the business end, we have two protective caps which shield the emitters. The rubber lanyards are tightly sealing them against the front. Now it does concern me that they are stretching like this. After a couple of years I hope they don't degrade enough to crack and fall apart. The quality I mentioned earlier also extends to the tinted lenses. It's not just cheap brass laser diodes which are exposed to the elements. These emitters here are beautifully sealed. As we're here, take note of the IR Illuminator, which has an adjustable bezel to calibrate from flood to spot, so that'll be interesting to see later on in the video. 
The adjustment turrets on both sides have stiff rotations. Now, it does have a very light tactile click when you are turning them, but as the knobs are so heavy when you are dialing in the adjustment, you barely get definitive clunks, unlike when you're calibrating a scope where it's all super positive, depending on if the scope is actually any good. The fire button on the top provides a solid clicky activation, although I wouldn't think anyone would be using this as its primary function. The included cable button would make things a lot easier, especially if the pack is mounted on the 12 o'clock position. It has a small LED to indicate when the laser or the illuminator is firing, and only comes on when you're activating the fire buttons. Press and hold for momentary, and if you want it constantly on, double click. Nice and easy. The safety block can be easily removed with the included Allen key, and that'll grant you access to the full power suite of the PEC 2. If you're playing at sites where they only require you to use low power mode on your laser devices, keeping that block in place provides that additional safety barrier. The mode selector is robust, and it turns with good resistance, and it locks into place as it should. Nothing much else to say, it's all good. This unit takes two double A's and is said to have a six hour battery life under all modes. Finally, the PEC takes the Milspec crane plugs. You can use the one that's provided or your own compatible external switches. The small Modelite style button locks into the socket securely. No complaints here. As you can see, they also include a dust plug if you're not using it. Somo Gear have put a lot of good thought into this unit, lots of experience learned from their PEC 15s have gone into it, and summing up the overview, it's a good product so far. On my Marui M4A1 it looks mint, and I'm looking forward to lighting up the darkness with this PEC 2, and this brings me along to my night vision device, which I think goes perfectly with this M4, and the TV remote bolted onto it. I'm talking about a device which was pretty much outdated at the time the PEC-2 was released, and often looked down upon by night vision nerds, the ANPVS-7. Yes, the single intensifier tube to the two ocular lens units is an iconic relic of the late 80s and 90s. I had always seen them in books, thinking they were the ultimate accessory for the Gucciest militaries. They may have been in those days, but times have moved on so much that apparently it's laughable to even be seen with this kit. I don't particularly care, it's retro, it's old school, and it's still fun to use. I found it on a popular auction website in 2007 and imported it from Germany for an excellent price. They might have fell off the back of a Humvee for all I know. To get the shots for this review, I'm using an MOD Armoury adapter for the iPhone 5. On the one hand, it's great to be able to film in 1080p directly into one eyepiece. On the other hand, it's extremely uncomfortable to wear. You can either choose to pity me or be impressed that I was stupid enough to use this setup for most of a night up, and I've never known pain like it. Still, I got to capture me lurking around, tagging people with my Marui HK45, making it look so easy. Good evening, children of the night. I've got the beautiful M4 carbine set up right here with the Samo Gear Pack 2. We have the target set up just down there, roughly 15 meters away, not too far, just to see what the laser is doing and all the basic functions of the Pack 2 and see what it's capable of. And then we're just going to stretch it along further past that, 50 meters and beyond. So let's do this. So if we just go down to our first function, IR mode, look down range at the target, and see what the low powered laser is like, double click, constant on, 
Well, and that's what she looks like. So, as you can see up close, it's quite bright, actually. It's not blinding. It's, it's not blooming at all or anything. Not bad at all. And we go down range, and that's the 50 meter fence. And you can see the laser is slightly larger, but it's still not too bad. It's still sharp enough to do what's necessary, I guess. Not too bad, not too bad at all. Now, if we just go over to the next function, which is the IR illuminator, and that's what we're looking at. That's on the focused IR illuminator. Not too bad at all. And then down range, you can really see it. It's pretty good. Pretty good range. So if we just scroll along to the fence on here on the left, and yep, that's still the IR illuminator, but you could probably use it as its own target designator at this distance. Not that you would want to, because the laser is good enough for that kind of work anyway. So, yeah, IR laser and IR illuminator. Now, what we can do with the illuminator is just spread out that focus. So, you can see that there. It's a lot wider, it's about yay big on the target at 15 meters. Again, let's get closer range. And it's kind of like a kind of like a cheap tack light, really, isn't it? Um, it'll send additional IR light down range, but yeah, it's okay. It'll work. So with the M4 tightly in the grip of the the tripod, if I show you going back onto focus mode, you'll see the shift of that IR illuminator just go wildly off. See, that's not me, that's... the M4 is as tight as I can hold it in the tripod, but you can see it shifts the point of where the IR is looking at. Um, don't know if that's supposed to do that, but it does. Hmm. So, down range, there's your focused IR, and then your wide light function. Now we do have a lot of ambient light here unfortunately but if it were a lot darker you'd definitely be able to see that illuminator a lot better. Okay so transitioning from the low power IR laser over to the high power. Let's go through the illuminator and there's the high power IR laser. See that you can just about make out the beam coming off of it. That's pretty cool but it's definitely kicking out a lot more IR light going down range. And you can see on the target's face there, you can see it blooming really quite brightly at close range. Yeah, that's a lot of IR light. And again, going close range over to the fence. Yeah, it's pretty strong. You can probably imagine how bright it is going to be if there's not as much ambient light down range. Now if we go over here to the trees in the distance, that's about just over 150 meters away from where I am. And you can see the beam heading all the way over there, no problem. And the beam is definitely a lot more distinctive at this distance. Pretty cool. Looking through the, the ACOG. Just a little bit off, but that's okay. Now, let's go high power IR mode. Now you can see the focused IR beam, a little bit brighter than before. And then if we rotate, you can see, yeah. And that's the widest flood that we have on this unit. And it's kicking out a lot more IR light. That's pretty good. And then up close, <laughs> that's fully encapsulating the target at this distance, really blinding it right there. So, with the ambient light that we got around here this evening, that's actually a pretty decent amount of light for hitting at it. So if you go back to low power mode, you can see it dim off there. You can barely see it. Yeah, see, it is working, but let's take it on high power mode and is really punching through the darkness and hitting that mannequin 
a lot better than the low power IO illuminator mode. So if we go back to distance, yep, that wide IR light is not making it 150 meters, but that's okay because we can just rotate that and we can hit the trees all the way over there. You can just about see the beam. Illuminator, high power mode hitting 150 meters. Not bad at all. Final quick rundown of the fire modes we got low power IR laser, IR illuminator, low power mode, high powered IR laser. High powered illuminator, and then dual high power mode. Let's see what it looks like when we actually shoot the thing. So, double click the constant on and aim for the torso and Okay, laser switched itself off. That's not good. Try that again. All right. Yeah. Hmm. That's not good. Switches itself off when it's firing. So that's that may be an issue with the spring tension on the batteries, like what I saw on the old GMP PEC 15. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, I mean, laser is almost pretty much on there, but that's. Yeah, that's weird. Give for a head. Okay, now that's me just holding in the button, but if I go constant on and fire... Oh, staying on. It's a weird one. Okay, now we push the target back to 50 meters. Just about to see it right there in the center of the frame. So, I've got my clip-on 3 power magnifier, so... Doing its best to get a better look at it at this distance. Nope. Again, laser still switching itself off. I need to shim, shim the battery compartment. Let's go again. Could have been a hit. Yep. That was a hit. Go again. There we go. Don't know where on the target that was, but... <laughs> Hit the bin. So, let's address this fundamental flaw in this device. The power cutoff when you actually use it when attached to a rifle. Somo Gear's website says it's for airsoft use only, which is a fair statement. However, even on gas blowbacks, the unit shuts off and that recoil isn't exactly bashing your shoulder to pieces. Given the fact that Somo Gear uses potted PCBs to protect against shock, I'm going to guess that it's the battery contacts that seem to be softly kissing the cells. Remember those two O-rings I spoke of earlier? Well here's where they come into play. After contacting them, Somo Gear sent me a troubleshooting guide for their PEC-2, which involves using those two O-rings placed inside the battery compartments, and this is the manufacturer's accepted mod for use with GBBRs. As I said before, the GMP PEC-15 had this problem, and that was solved by shimming the batteries. At the time, I tended to use something as simple as kitchen foil. As I had some available to me from one particular source, I was able to reinforce the connection and it was fine after that. Using the O-rings worked for me just as well. Here we are at 25 meters. So we'll see how we get on with this distance, shooting point threes. That 
it's like child's play. It's so easy. That's so cool. Pushing the unit way beyond a mere 150 metres, and I've come to the shores along the Severn Estuary, where I fired everything the Samogir Peck 2 had at the country of Wales. Oh, it's beautiful. The low power laser was just barely visible, and you can just about make it out, but ultimately it was getting lost at these extreme ranges. On high, it was everything I expected it to be, a beam so crisp, and it easily projected clearly beyond two miles. Is this information practical? No, likely not, but I was curious enough to try it out. The low illuminator doesn't fare too well here. The wide flood function wasn't effective, so I'm using the focused beam to cut through the night. The high power mode was easier to distinguish in wide flood at closer distances, and of course, in the concentrated spot mode. Now where have I seen this before? That's a bad signal, alright. The laser offers a massive window of adjustment. Here at 50 meters, I've plotted points of its maximum windage and elevation. One thing to keep in mind is that, as you're rolling along the laser, it travels on a direct straight path without wandering off. The adjustment capability isn't an afterthought to make it sort of applicable to the task at hand. It's purpose designed for practical operations. Now the IR Illuminator has the same kind of calibration built into it too, but this has a tendency to be unreliable. The focus ring for flood and spot was definitely an afterthought, or at least it wasn't made with the inclusion of retaining zero. Not only does the positioning of the IR light fly way off centre when adjusting, but the head of the adjustment bezel can be pivoted off its axis, meaning you could ruin the whole shift if you aren't extremely careful. Sure, one can set a rough zero, but if it's hastily tuned to flood and then come back again, you might see a different zero by the time you return. It's not something I would take seriously, and if I were to use this for my night fighting accessory, I'd use the wide illuminator to flood an area and leave it at that. Although, this is what I saw from this unit alone, so don't take that as gospel, just take it under advisement. The Somo Gear Peck 2. Now it's time to throw all the good points and bad points together, as I usually do with reviews, so let's begin with the positives. Besides the obvious manufacturer's logo, it remains a good replica of the Insight Technology Peck 2. The attention to detail is accurate to the real thing. You know what the airsoft industry or clone industry can end up looking like, where they don't quite capture the right lines and it ruins the whole aesthetic for potential buyers, but Somo Gear seemed to have copied it to a high standard. The build quality is excellent, everything you want in a dependable accessory for your rifles. No question about it, I take it to a night game anytime, and the controls are A-OK. -okay. Nothing is sloppy or loose. The adjustment turrets are very stiff indeed, annoyingly stiff, but at least you know they aren't going to walk off on their own. The laser module is excellent. When concerning its vast range of adjustability, its straight lines of calibration without diagonal drifting, and the ability of a zero that's virtually set in stone, this is exactly what is required of a product such as this. The high power modes, while of limited value for this thing of ours, it's still a really cool feature to have. I say limited value because it does tend to bloom up to medium distances. And of course, more importantly, it's actually quite dangerous. You don't want to flash any of these IR modules in your eyes or anyone else's, and certainly not in full power modes. Still, they have given their customers the option to have it, so I cannot really put it down as a negative for something that it's manufactured to possess. It works, and it's there, so it's made the list. Use great care if you're using this for night gaming.
The ability to take crane plugs is good too. No airsofty 3.5mm jacks, just mil-spec crane plugs. You can utilise the large amount of tactical switches out there for both single and dual electronics combos, which Sonogear Gear also offer by the way. The button switch accessory is well made and gets you started right from the box, but I think I would have preferred a traditional tape switch with the long pad so you could duct tape it to a CAC broom handle, but this'll do nicely. And lastly, Somo Gear offer a respectable warranty on their products. If yours develops a fault, they grant you 180 days from the date of purchase. Of course, terms apply, look them up for the full breakdown. The bad news of the PEC 2. Now, my number one complaint is the cutoff under GBBR recoil, and the Murui M4 MWS doesn't kick very much at all. Still, it's enough to turn off the lights. But of course, Somogia have already made arrangements for the user to solidify the battery connection, however I would rather them do it properly and use stiffer springs to maintain that connection, instead of slap a couple of o-rings in the box, but there we are. Next is the IR illuminator itself. The adjustable bezel to floodlight is all over the place, and doesn't work like your traditional torch with a similar feature. The whole calibration of this IR module seems like an afterthought. You cannot really lay it on top of the laser. It can adjust, but not enough for it to be of any use. Once you've cycled through from spot to flood and then back again, you could lose any rough adjustment you originally set. I think the best way to use this is to keep it on a good wide flood. One important thing to mention regarding my test and evaluation period for this product is that this is the second PEC-2 I had sent to me by Bavtac. The first model sadly was extremely underpowered, specifically the illuminator was not performing well at all. Its performance both in low and high modes were dim, and pretty much indistinguishable between each other. It was almost useless. My Solomonsis PEC-2 illuminator was considerably more superior in that regard. I spoke to Bavtac and they returned it to Somogear, where it was rapidly replaced with a 100% functional unit, noting of the rare instance of this particular flaw. Bavtac sent me a fresh model, and that's what I used to complete this review. As soon as I fired it up, I immediately saw a huge improvement. The new pack was slicing through the darkness as it should. So remember to check your unit upon receiving it, and if you do have any issues, just call it in and get it replaced. Apart from that, the Somo Gear Pack 2 is a functionally solid product. The laser holds its zero, and its illumination modes are useful too. Just try not to use that illuminative zero ring, and careful not to blind anyone. If you are looking for this kind of era laser designator, and cannot acquire a real one, this is honestly the next best thing. It'll be an outstanding addition to your Global War on Terror M4, or whatever you wanted it to go on. The retail price of these is certainly going to be cheaper than what a real one would cost, but it's still not going to be dirt cheap. My previous PEC-2 clone was only just functional, but similarly priced as this. I know which one I'd rather spend the money on. It's been super fun to have this opportunity to play around with this Gucci accessory and I cannot thank Bavtac enough. They're continuing to expand their product range way beyond little upgrade parts, so why not tap them up and have a good snoop, see what's available. Thanks to them for the continued support and I'll be really sad to let this peck go back to you. It's been great, thank you. To everyone at home, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been super cool reviewing something different like this. If you liked what you saw here and have not yet subscribed, join me. If you'd like to help support this one-man reviewing band, you can like, share, and even donate. Links in the description, along with my social media accounts if you want to check out regular updates. Until next time, take care my friends.